<clears throat> All right, you're live. <sighs> Chad, you're live. Biscuit. Well, I'm not showing live on on my end. I am. So, oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, what the crap? What the? <sighs> oh. Babe, we've All been right. sitting here waiting so to start for like 10 minutes, and you're not ready. Somebody just commented, pack a oh. Pack of oatmeal like a pack of bacon, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, welcome back, everyone, to the 3 of 7 podcast. Uh, yeah, I'm recording there. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, um, hey, guys. Uh, look, with technical difficulties today, you know, our tech guy, he does the best he can, but... We need to hire a new one. <laughs> Look, man, I try to tell y'all. Yeah, I don't know if y'all understand how. Look, this YouTube channel could go away at any minute. It could go away. I, I mean, the, I, I was listening to a dude the other day. Uh, have you ever watched those documentaries, Chili uh, Agenda and Agenda Two? I think. Have you watched them? No. Well, Andy had that guy on his podcast the other day. Really good Christian guy, actually. But they're all about these documentaries are apparent. I, I want to watch them. They're apparently all about the communist agenda mm -hmm. here in America. Hmm. Yeah. And listen, to this guy. So they just deleted his whole YouTube channel. They just took it, took it down. Well, yeah. No, no warnings, no strikes, no nothing. Yeah, that's happened with multiple people, but Anything could go away like that, though. Anything. It's not just YouTube. Anything. Exactly. Well, <laughs> well, we. I think because you, you know, the stuff you give me to talk about on these truck talks, man, it's highly, it's highly <laughs> dislikable to the YouTube. You think? <laughs> well, you'd think it was. You know, you don't give me easy things to talk about on these truck talks. Oh. And so, it, you know, that's why I created this other channel, Chad Wright 278. If this thing goes down, hopefully the other one will stay up and we keep rocking and rolling, man. But we was just trying to log on this live thing, man. And, and it's just jacking with us. Hmm. And so we're trying to get this squared away. You think you're being look, targeted? All look, of YouTube might go down. All of YouTube might go down. Y'all don't. The whole world might look, go down. That's why we got Patreon, man. Uh, stay hard. Um, what, what the crap? Can I tell you what <laughs> this morning in the God, month? That, Chili. That's a weird fella right there. <laughs> Chili. <laughs> Let me tell you, this morning we're all grabbing our weights at the gym and there's a bunch of people in a small area. And he looks at me, he goes, baby, I'm so hard. And then just oh walks my away. Gosh. And I was like, why would you do that? That's like I'll the stay most hard. That's the most awkward thing ever. Why would you do that? I'm already not a fan of this one. Let's I stay hard, man. Let's clean it up. <laughs> well, Filthy. listeners, Filthy. welcome back to the 307 podcast. If you're watching us live on YouTube, thank you for being here, man. We love you guys. Uh the the live interaction element of our podcast is really unique and I'm thankful that you guys join us live on these uh, conversations. We might take some questions from you guys at the end, at least from the the three or four of you who have enough sense to ask a question that's worthy of being answered. Um, and if you're listening on audio, thank you for being here. This is the Three of Seven podcast. We got we got Pope Chili sitting up in the house with his denim vest on, his barbell joggers, his barbell long sleeve. Oh, it's that time of year, son. I got my one mile out barbell joggers on right now. It's that time of year. These these britches right here are just a game changer for running and working out in the wintertime. You know, you walk outside, you get that cold air hitting you on your legs. It don't make no difference to me because I stay hard, son. But but if you are soft and you walk outside and you don't want that cold air hitting you on the legs, look, man, <laughs> I wore these joggers for daggone 
uh, I don't know, a hundred plus miles out at Cocodona when it got cold up there in the high elevations. I got them on this morning, son, because it's cold. It's that time of year. If you're going to get, look, a lot of y'all get fat and lazy in the wintertime because you don't want to get out and exercise because you're scared of the cold. Get you some daggone barbell joggers. Get your butt out the house. The cold air is going to be off your legs. You're going to be all right. Get out there and get after it. Check them out at barbellapparel.com. You can actually get you this special one I got on right here. One mile out. That's from the documentary that you guys have hopefully watched on YouTube. This is a special lineup, man. These things, man, they're tapered down at the, the ankle just right. Plenty of room for my big, strong, sexy quads up in the top. Fit nicely around the waist. Make me look good like I always should. Pope Chili's in the house. We got Taylor Swift sitting in the seat of beside Pope Chili, also known as Biscuit. And then, but a man behind the scenes that makes it all come alive, that brings it to you in the back alleys of New York City. What? We got Bishop Blake. What? Count the money. Ew. Gross. Count the money. <laughs> oh, man. WWE ain't got nothing on that intro. That was so disturbing. That's what we got for y'all this morning. Y'all done don't even know where y'all tuned up into this morning, Look at morning, all the son. drool on his beard. <laughs> Dark side Bob done give three pounds and said, calm down, son. <laughs> Bob, keep sending them pounds. Boy, I'm looking for some Canadian gold up in here. You got Canadian gold? Send it my way. When people ask us where, they, <laughs> where I see myself in five years, where I see myself is in a WWE ring tag teaming with Chad. That's where I see myself. Can you mean you don't see that? yourself in a sweatshop <laughs> packing orders <laughs> with a bunch of other people? <laughs> That's what I should, huh? <laughs> Count the money, boy. Yeah, I've been looking for that dang Canadian gold. See, y'all don't know the side of me that's a leprechaun. All right? What is wrong with you today? Uh, you, you could just forget about all the gold and go for Bitcoin. No. Nah. No, I like gold, son. Don't you think Bitcoin's going to save the planet? Well, I don't know. I, I'm just interested in stacking my gold. The, bl the blockchain? It's not. It's not, it's going to solve all the problems. He's in, he's in the NFTs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in the NFTs, buying picture, uh, digitalized what? <laughs> pixels, <laughs> pixels of somebody, man. What? Yeah, I'm into that NFT. Uh. Bishop Blake, he's counting money. He's making it happen for y'all. And then we have got Cardinal Wright. <laughs> That's me. What the crap? Yeah. Po the Pope made me a Cardinal. Is that above? That's below? Oh, yeah. Everything's below the Pope. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. He, But he has power. He, he has power vested in him to deem me a Cardinal. Mm. And so... Uh, it was between a dink, a deacon, a deacon. And, <laughs> deacon. It was between a deacon and a cardinal, deacon and Chad. And I preferred to be a cardinal because I like birds. Um, now <laughs> I was wondering, I, can can anybody explain this to me? And then biscuit, you got a segment coming up. Yeah, we got, and I have we, we a got surprise a, too. Okay, we got a segment biscuit coming up. Can anybody explain to me this? YouTube, if you're listening on here, please explain this to me. I, I'm not kidding y'all, man. Almost every single time I go for a run, a four-wheeler ride, I'm hunting. I, almost every single time I'm in the woods, a bird of prey will be around me, S swoop down. Sometimes they'll fly beside me. Sometimes they'll swoop down right in front of me. Sometimes they'll be sitting in a tree just watching me. Does any of y'all else experience this? I, I'm talking yeah, about I do. almost every time I go out, Me I will too. see really, I a hawk or an owl. And, 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 like, so, and I'm talking about close. I mean, I've had these jokers on multiple occasions, like, come down, Land right glide right beside me. What is going on, man? Why is this happening to me? You want me to tell you what you're this about? This has been happening for years. Happening to you? Yeah, this has been happening for years. It's not normal. Well, we cohabitate the earth with birds. I don't know if you knew that. 
Blake said it happens to him too, boo. It don't happen to him as much, though. How do you know? Because I just know. It's just something unique to me that I'm just a cardinal. I, what What's the sign here? I, I need you viewers on YouTube interpret this sign for me. What are these bird? What do these birds of prey want for, from me? Lord, everybody always looking for a sign. Yeah, I mean they want something from me, and I can't figure it out. So, but it keeps happening. You know, it's deer season. I'll tell y'all a deer hunting story later if we have time. What's up? Uh, I don't know whether to call you Taylor Swift or Biscuit. <laughs> I there's literally nothing about me that's like Taylor Swift. I don't know why y'all think that's funny. You're a good looking woman, boo boo. You are out of control today. So my first surprise before we get to my segment <clears throat> is that it's Chili's birthday. So I got him this. He thinks nobody knows when his birthday is, but I found out when his birthday is. <sighs> Happy birthday, Chili. I got you that. That is a lopsided muffin right Happy there. Happy birthday. <laughs> that you looks... got a muffin top that looks like that. <laughs> you in bad shape. All right. Happy that, birthday, Chili. That looks like Happy a, birthday. That looks like a fat woman that got a turn on a G-force <laughs> left turn. All her fat went to one side. Looks like somebody rode a mountain bike too long. <laughs> <laughs> All their fat went to the front. I've seen that before. <laughs> Chili, is your birthday for real, man? That's what they tell me. Where'd you get that info from? I can't say. Oh, I posted a video the other day. Uh, I no, I'll get to that later. All right, let's let's get with your segment, baby. Okay. What's your segment? My segment. Explain is, to the folks at home what a segment is. A segment is anything that I decide I want to come up with to make you guys do at the beginning of the podcast. Okay, there's a special segment here. This is a U.S. history segment, mm. and I failed miserably at it. <clears throat> Okay, who was inaugurated on April 30th, 1789? Inaugurated as what? President. <laughs> 1789? Yep, April 30th, 1789. Oh, it wouldn't be John Adams. Um, Chili Blake, if y'all... No, I, mean, uh, I don't know. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson is what I would have said. George Washington. What? It's literally on whitehouse.gov. That's when he was sworn in. Mm -hmm. In 1789? 1789, April 30th, 1789, the first president of the United States. Oh, good that's him. what they want you to think. Yeah, that's not real. That's history. on that government <laughs> info. That's what oh. they want you to think. On, on April 9th. Did anybody on YouTube get that right? Well, nobody. Uh, somebody said Reagan. James, Reagan. <laughs> James Wright said Bill Clinton. <laughs> Holy okay. Crap. <laughs> On April nineteenth, seventeen seventy five, the battle. Or uh, I'm sorry, the Rev Revolutionary War started with the battles of what? There's two of them. Seventeen seventy five. Mm -hmm. April nineteenth. The bat. The first two battles <laughs> Look at of the Revolutionary War. That's the shot heard around the world, man. What battle is it? Um. In the. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't know this stuff, Lexington. Really? Yeah, did someone say it? No, I just knew it. Did you? You lied. <laughs> yeah, Lexington and Concord. Concord? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody That's what I was gonna that. say. <laughs> yeah, I was actually gonna say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah the Battle of Lexington and Concord for sure, and shortly after that was the Battle of Gettysburg. Okay. And then you had Washington got inaugurated. Last, last question. Name the first five presidents of the United States. Well, this was a good segment. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, I know we got George Washington now. You told us that earlier. Yeah. Number two. Um, John Adams. Nice, babe. Yeah. I, I read a, a bibliography called John Adams. Wow. It's a big it's a big book. I but, remember that. Yeah, it's a it's a really good book. John Adams was a interesting guy. Actually, <laughs> I actually like John Adams better than I like George Look, Washington. Just stick to the question. George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison. Than James Monroe, it's easy. Oh dang you! Yeah, that's well. That's He's where I was that going. Off of YouTube. Why do Come you on, have guys. to? Why are you stealing my answers, dude? You didn't know it. You forgot, so you went off on this tangent about how you right, read a book I got about John one Adams. More. I got know. one more. Then I got there one go. more. Yeah, yeah. What was the first state to ratify the Constitution? December seventh, nineteen. Um, <laughs> December seventh, seventeen eighty-seven. The first, first state. First state to ratify the Constitution, Virginia. 
Oh man, it's Connecticut. Delaware. Delaware? Delaware ain't even a state, man. <laughs> That's where Joe Biden hails from. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I really suck at that U.S. history. We were talking. I must say, I got my answers from YouTube. So, <laughs> YouTube people, if y'all, Lucy in, you know, you gave me those presidents and you nailed it. So, appreciate think, y'all. I, YouTube, thank you guys for making me look, making us look smart for once. Well, we were talking, I was talking crap about people who don't know basic U.S. history the other day. And I was like, well, do I know any basic, like, and US? you didn't know it? Uh uh-uh. uh. I mean, I knew a few things, but no, I did not like most of those. I didn't know all of the answers. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Well, I've read a bibliography on both George Washington. It's called Washington, and then one on John Adams. And actually, George Washington, yes, pretty cool cat. But let me tell you, he advocated heavily for more control being granted to the federal government. He was a federalist, all right? And he uh, he advocated for a lot of power being also given to the president of the United States as the first president of the United States. Thomas Jefferson couldn't freaking stand him. Uh I think James I don't remember if James Madison I I know um John Adams didn't like him either because he was advocating for when they're like standing up the structure of the government. You know, a lot a lot of George Washington's peers were against a standing army. Did y'all know that? Mm -mm. Yeah, it's George Washington who advocated for a standing army. The his peers just wanted each state to be in charge of their own militia that could basically be called up, right? So if something happened, if the United United States were attacked, it would be each state would supply forces from their militia. And it what in the militia of a state wasn't like a full-time gig, right? I actually, I like that model personally. Um, But yeah, a lot of the freaking crap that we have to deal with today is because of all the power that George Washington advocated for as a federalist. See, back then there wasn't Republican and Democrat. It It was federalist, and excuse my language, but I forget the other one. (laughs) <laughs> what? But that was the two parties. Uh-huh. Those two. Yep. Yeah. That's foul language. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds French. There's your daggone history lesson, man. That was a good one. Yeah. George, I, I mean, George. He, <laughs> that was good. You know, George, he 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 was just a little power hungry, man. I mean, good dude. Definitely a little bit power hungry, though. You didn't like serving under him, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No, he wasn't my favorite president to serve under. All right. Oh, I can't continue on without showing these right here. Ooh. Um, our friend Noah Stagg, he came out and did a rite of passage course with us. Dang. He sent us these cutting boards. He called them chopping blocks, but they're really, really nice. Got a 3 of 7 logo and a Pin Hody Trail logo. That's pretty cool. On the bottom of them. Yeah. He must have known that you really grabbed cool. our cutting board the other day to pick it off the counter and broke it in half. Yeah, it's falling apart. You remember yeah, when this you was did perfect that? timing. <laughs> I mean, these these things are heavy. Oh like, yeah, they, these this is legit, man. That's cool. Look, this one's for you, Chili. <laughs> the small ones for you. Well, it's a, it's well, cool. He don't have much room at his house. <laughs> yeah. for all the boxes he's got. <laughs> That's for you when you're. Well, it's very nice. Know. I like that. Counting that money, eating Ritz crackers or whatever the crap. Ritz is. crackers and tuna. Yeah, when you cut the cheese, you can put it on there. I mean, that's a perfect timing. That that's a, that's a that's a substantial gift right there. Yeah, for real. It really is. That's pretty cool. Um, Noah Stag. Noah Stag. Yep. So what? Yeah, what's on your mind this morning, guys? What's going on? I don't, what? What's up, baby? I like how sometimes you ask a question and then you start talking. <clears throat> Yeah, what's up? 
I I was I wanted to tell Chili about how yesterday you got really mad at me for saying bless you mm. when you sneezed. Yes, I did. Chad got mad. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? I thought it was really because it's so ridiculous. It, it's so <laughs> ridiculous. Why? I'm over here sneezing my freaking head off, dude. And he's like, bless you, bless you, yeah. bless you. Bless I, you. I, I'm literally like machine gun sneezing. <laughs> and she's saying bless you after every sneeze. <laughs> and I'm like, that is so freaking stupid. <laughs> it is stupid to bless someone after a sneeze. Like, what? Where do, does anybody know where that came from? Now, can you control your anger any better than that thank you chili i mean come on man thank you chili's always good about talking some sense into you. i don't like it either you know what i did well, it's stupid it ain't that i don't agree with you but it's just i mean come on man pick your pick your battles That's, well you gotta know that he wasn't actually mad about that he was mad about something else and that was <laughs> like look this just aggravates me and you're about to get both barrels <laughs> i mean you take out your annoyance over someone saying bless you well, so I, I Jeez. look, man, but how is that not a stupid response to somebody sneezing? I mean, I, I'm just well, being real. Can I defend myself and say that once the machine gun sneezing started, <laughs> that I turned it into a song? That way it was just a continuous blessing instead of multiple bless yous. <laughs> That's even more aggravating, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was great. Oh, someone says your heart stops when you sneeze. That's what they say. So you actually survived a near-death experience, so you need to be blessed. You're welcome. I'll tell you what, man. Who, look, there's so many little silly niceties that our, our weak, comfortable, complacent culture allows for that are just so ridiculous. In such a, uh, it's it's a a waste of breath and words and. You think please and thank you yeah. are a waste, don't yes. you? Yes, yes, th- all of those. Like totally. saying please. No, don't say please. Just tell me what the crap you need. Don't listen to him, people. Okay, saying thank you. I don't need you to thank me. It's if I if I'm if I did something for you, it's because I wanted to do something for you. All right. Don't tell me that. Uh, saying I'm sorry is it, is just uh, it is so stupid. Do you that don't mean nothing? If you're truly sorry about something, if you want if you want to apologize, do it by way of action. Show the person that you're going to do differently than whatever it is you did that make that made you think. You owed an apology. Act different. The crap's wrong with y'all, man. Well, you do those things, too. No, I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. do I gave you that jacket the other day, and you said, yeah, thanks, Bubba. <laughs> you say sorry well, to me, I, too. I just, I just did that because you guys are all civilized people. I know, you, I know you're going to you, get freaking offended if I don't. <laughs> when you get real worked up and you start going, you say, I know, guys. I got worked up. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, I do that you apologize. to accommodate y'all's you say sorry to me y'all. too. Yes, I do that to accommodate you guys' civility. Well, say, look, if you if you want them to stop, quit accommodating. You're just enabling it to keep going. Stop saying sorry it. is the beginning of the change. It's acknowledging to the other person that you know you did wrong, and then the behavior change comes after sorry. that. Sorry. Now, some people say sorry about everything. That's silly. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Bless you. Sorry. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Please. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Just sorry. say it all. Just what? say it all. I don't understand why please and thank you is such a bad thing. I just don't understand. It's just a waste. It's just an absolute waste. And, you, you know, when when this, when this when all this stuff goes to the pots, when, in, when this internet collapses, when we get hit with the EMP, when all of these... Uh, you know, all of these illegal illegal immigrants decide to start attacking us and from within, and we're just in all-out <laughs> anarchy and war. Like, yeah. Can you hand me my gun, please? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bless, yeah. bless but you. Thank you for that. Now I'll shoot. Yeah. It's freaking ridiculous, man. What about Canadians that say sorry? <laughs> 
Yeah. Sorry about what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. About oh, that man. You know what? That leads me into my first topic of the episode here. Bless you. You're speaking about come come uh <laughs> com- Canadians. <laughs> You're talking about uh Canadians. Canadians. Comedians. <laughs> Look, man. Where? The only good thing that's coming out of Canada these days is oh. the gold. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Canada? Yeah. Yeah. The only good thing coming out of Canada these days is the gold. Okay. Um, All right. I, actually, we just had <laughs> the rock course this past weekend. We just had four Canadian students. Yeah. Pretty come cool. Out. Two, I didn't two, know. Yeah. Two of the four made it through. Yeah. Wow. Did, did Steve get with you? Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, so... I, you know, I take that back then. You know, there are some good people in Canada. Mr. Moon. There are some good people in Canada. Oh, yeah. The Jansons. Yeah. I love them. There's a lot of good people. Well, they, they, they've they immigrated. They've immigrated. Now. Yeah, but they're, they're, there's a lot of cool people yeah. that live in Canada. They're tough. Canada's just when, tough. when you go from being a Canadian, though, to an American, you move up like 10 notches <laughs> in pretty much everything. Says the American. Well, I mean, it's just the evidence of it, but. You know, I posted a truck talk, I don't know, Monday or something, Mm -hmm. and I talked about toting a gun with you, you know? I said, look, man, because y'all know we just had this, did y'all, did y'all know about that mass shooting up in Maine? Yeah, that was a veteran. Mm -mm. Yeah, Yeah, this dude freaking went around, I don't know how many people he killed. He was in the reserves. Killed dozens of people, didn't he? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and injured a lot. Yeah, too. And, and so, you, you know, my truck talk was all about, look, man, when are y'all going to start taking this seriously? Like, when y'all going to, like, to, if you are a good, God-fearing American person who freaking gives a crap, start toting the gun, man. You know how to stop a, a crazy person with a gun? You kill them with a gun. That's about it. Let's Chilly. make sure people get training before Got they that. start carrying a gun. Yes. Get training. Yeah. Go go talk to my man Edgar yeah, at and- Osprey Shooting Solutions. He'll train you, man. Look, I'm going to have Edgar on the podcast later this week. Yeah, get some training, get a gun, and carry the stinking gun. Yes, you are going to have to start carrying a gun, Chili. Ooh. I'm sick of you going unarmed. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. So, you know, I post this video. I see That's all funny. these. I see all these comments coming through from people in Canada, <laughs> from people in uh, Australia, from people in Hawaii, from people in New Zealand, talking about. Oh, I'm glad you don't come over to Australia. We don't have gun violence over here because they've banned all our guns. You know, we 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 don't have guns over here. We don't have to worry about that shooting mass shooting violence. Jokes on you, sucker. <laughs> Joke is on you. Cuz let me tell you right now. This old boy ain't forgot what it looked like for you, Australian. <laughs> what it looked like for you. Canadian, what it looked like for you, New Zealander, what it looked like for you, freaking all over the daggone world, all you first world countries that chose to to give up your freaking guns, ain't nobody around this joint right here for God about what the crap it looked like for you in 2020 and 2021, looked where about, they're putting y'all in freaking camps, man. Looked about like it did here. No, sir. Yes, no, sir. sir. Yes, sir. I, I was on a whole nother level, that's where, son. That's where it's unfortunate that you're wrong. It, no, sir. It was <laughs> on a whole nother level. Yeah. Now, now, right here, some places in the United States, I would agree with that. But let me tell you, I know people who live in New Zealand. And the stuff that was happening in New Zealand won't happening in Georgia. They weren't allowed to leave their home. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it yeah. won't happen in here. That was wild. I'm talking about they was putting these jokers in freaking like literal camps. Like they were these, they were literally the police were showing up. If you had a gas station, 
open to shut you down. You weren't allowed to leave your yard. I, I'm talking about, yes, it was. We ain't forgot about that. Joke is on you, sucker. You have app. You don't even understand, man. Being free is dangerous. It ain't freaking easy. It, it, it. It, it's it it's hard. Y'all jokers in all the first world countries, and maybe it wasn't you. Maybe you aren't the one who decided to give your guns up. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was your grandparents that screwed you over. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. The fact that we are able to keep and bear arms is the Literally, the only thing that stands between us and complete and absolute control by those who are in power. Yeah. That's it. I, I, you, you, you can dispute it all you want, Chili, well, Chad, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, son. Well, Chad, it's illogical what you're saying. I mean, you act like when the government gets tyrannical, all these people with all, all, all these citizens with guns are going to rise up and do something. They've got tyrannical. It, it, they've done it. And what? And you've sat and everybody sat there and looked at them. Look, man, they've done it. I got a truck talk coming out tomorrow. I that mean, answers your question about that. When, when, when they get tyrannical, man, I'm going to get pissed and I'm going to start and we're going to, yeah, well, huh. Yeah. When they get tyrannical, man, dude, it, they've gotten tyrannical. It's, it's decades too late. It, uh, what do you like? It's exactly how it's going to keep getting worse and worse and worse and devolve into the exact picture in another country, and, and, and that's going to get worse, and it's all going to be unified and worse and worse and worse. It's because, well, when it gets bad enough, I'll do it. When it, when it gets there, I'll do it. And guess what? You'll never do it. So well, You might be right. So I don't think you might be right. it does a dang thing to have guns when you don't. When you don't they keep they call you bluff, man. You, you know, the whole when they get tyrannical thing. You sound retarded if you keep saying that. They've gotten tyrannical. You might be right. But what I'm going to tell you is at least there's still a chance. Well, there's not really. A and, and for first world countries who have been disarmed, <clears throat> there is not a chance left. There's no chance. Well, yeah. There ain't so no at, chance here either. At least there's still a chance. I All believe right. there is still a chance. Well, hope is a hope can be a... Uh, a, a, a driving force. I yep. was I was listening to um, somebody talking about this new technology that China already has, supposedly that we're working on, and it's like drone warfare. That now they use like computers and stuff to fly them and remotes. I don't. I'm sure it's way further than I can explain. But the goal is to have them like AI, and I just was picturing that like if something ever went bad and all of us have rifles, shotguns, handguns, and the government's got a fleet of drones that are ran by AI that they can put out on their people. Like we'd be screwed. We don't, we're not all getting AI drones and missiles and like, like it'd be, a, I mean, it'd be a hard, it's a it, hard fight. Anytime you have an air asset bearing down on you. Yeah. If the government wanted to stomp us, they could do it. Mm. Like we me shoot clay, <laughs> but, but, but we... let me tell you, man, a bunch of stinking rednecks that are armed up and organized, you know, you know how, you know how many people I need? I need less than 1%. No fats, right? No fats. I need less than 1% of people who are. Equipped and trained to do what are they going to do? I I could literally do whatever I wanted with with less than one percent. Okay. Yep. I know you don't understand that. You could take out who you needed to take out. I could literally take control of everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the continent. Mm. Straight up. Do you know who you need to target? Oh yeah. Okay. Now y'all get mad at me. So that's that's, 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 that's control. talk about numbers. Yeah, I know you don't believe that. That's the fact. You don't know what you're talking about, man. Y'all look at y'all look at history, man. 
Why? Yeah. Okay. Look at history. Why, why what can- was the difference in now and then? Why did the revolution? Why was it able to happen? Why did it work? Because they had a place to go and they knew who the who to target. They knew what they had to do. You don't know who. You, what are you gonna do? Go, go go make Sleepy Joe go away? What's that gonna do, man? That ain't gonna do nothing. Well, man, you got to develop an intel network. <laughs> I mean, look, man. Like it, it, history is very clear on the the gun control issue. All right. I I mean, come on. Like you can look at so many examples of this. Nazi Germany. When the Nazi party gained power, they relaxed the gun regulation on the Nazi party members, but the laws were tightened specifically banning the ownership of guns by Jews, Nazi law systematically disarmed so-called unreliable persons also while relaxing restrictions for Nazi party members. The policies were later expanded to include the confiscation of arms in occupied countries. Yeah, what do you, you can what, look at That's this. exactly what we'll do. You can look at Stalin. You can look at the China's history, you can look. They, yeah, they all took the guns, and that's they what they're going to do here. The that, and yes, well, yes, they, it is headed that way. Yeah, I mean, but what, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, they ain't taking mine. Well, the, they ain't taking mine. Well, they ain't got to take yours. <laughs> I'm going to. So, how many of you out there are like me yeah. and say, "Hey, buddy, you ain't taking mine." Yeah. So well, you want to prove Chile wrong? <laughs> now, when we die. When I die, I can, I got no control left. I'm actually thinking about having a, a, a child just so there can be somebody left who says they ain't taking mine, son. Done recording. I'm thinking yeah. about having a, a son just so I know there's at least one person left up around this joint who say no. Nah. Yeah, most people said they ain't doing this, they ain't doing that, they ain't doing this, and then they've all done it. So well, I can only speak for myself. Yeah, exactly. You, that's all you can speak for. But if you want to look at history, look at look at it, it, you know Stalin took the guns, Hitler did, Mao did. Yep. Guess what? They did it very easily, very peacefully, mm-hmm. very easy. Yep. They just, gave them just, up. Just, they didn't take them. Actually, that's a, that's a misnomer. They didn't take them. Yeah. They they, they were willingly given to them. Just like, and that's exactly what will happen here and everywhere else. Just, well, it's already happened in Australia. It's already happened in New Zealand. It's all it's happening. That'll in, happen here. And already happened and, in Canada. And what most people don't understand what the crap is, is wrong with y'all. Is they're man. sitting at home saying, "Well, no, it ain't gonna be me either. I ain't taking mine." Guess what? They probably will. You'll give them up. A lot it won't of, take much. Uh, let me it go, don't take much pressure. I, You'll I, give them I up. agree with you. you. A lot of people who say they ain't taking mine but, under pressure certainly will. will just go ahead and hand them right over, man. Certainly will. I, I'll agree with you on that. There, look, we found something that we're in agreement on. Yeah. But, but, and, but the good news is I only need less than 1%. Well, you better hope that you better hope that many keep them. Yeah. That's what you need. There's always hope. All right. Well, Mike, I, I, I wanted I was to just address gonna say y'all ain't going to agree on much because Chili come here wanting to fight. He's got some anger. He pent up <laughs> anger. He needs to get out. Look, man, his man, side look, look, look I, I put this new shirt up for sale uh, on Monday. Look at this shirt. Look at this shirt. <laughs> All right. I put this new shirt up for sale on Monday. Literally mentioned it on a truck talk. And y'all jokers bought every stinking shirt Look, in less than 24 hours. We're going to do hours. the best we can next couple of days. Get them all out. Have them back in stock. There's more coming. We're going to do what we can. But uh, y'all going to have to bear with me I'm going to tell y'all, man, this shirt. Look, if y'all going to buy this shirt, I'm going I'm to, when Chili, if, if you ever get some back in stock, I'm going to explain to you. I actually drew this on a piece of paper. You remember? Did you ever see it, baby? The yeah, little I saw it. Okay. This image on this shirt was a direct reflection of my mind. I drew this with a pencil on a piece of paper, okay? Every aspect of this design has meaning. I'm going to explain the depth of meaning behind this design right here if Chili ever gets them back in stock. And let me tell you, 
If you're going to buy one of these shirts and you're going to wear it around, you better be the right person. That's all I got to tell you. Y'all talk about something while I go pee. What do y'all want to talk about while I go pee? <laughs> uh, do you really have to go pee? Yeah, I really got to go pee. What are y'all going to talk about while I'm gone? See here, guys, I'm proving my point here. Hosting a podcast is not easy. See, I, I, leave, I, get, I walk out of here and these jokers just sit like, like they're lumps on a log, right? So they'll, they'll find something to talk about for y'all while I go pee. Well, I could sit here and talk about the... Can we just talk crap about him? The please? economic ramifications in Kazakhstan right now, but that's getting a little off topic. Chad gets pissed about that. That sounds really interesting. I could talk about the World Series. No, that's gay. I, oh, I could talk about shipping shirts. I could talk, talk about, about the NBA starting back up. On the way here, someone played Christmas music, and it really upset me. Like, Why? It just really upset me. I just, I just think that people shove Christmas down people's throats, and I'm offended. Brooke, you lose all energy when he goes out of the room. Have you noticed that? <laughs> wait, wait. When we, Chad goes out of the room, you lose all energy. You're talking about Christmas. I'm saying we should not be playing Christmas music right now. Well, but I think Kazakhstan's way more interesting. So next time we should talk about that. Oh yeah, Kazakhstan. You know what that? Yeah. What what two countries does Kazakhstan border? You know that? Kazakhstan? Yeah. <laughs> well, are you talking about Kazakhstan or Kazakhstan? <sighs> Never mind. Yeah, exactly. You don't even <laughs> freaking know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I left out here and they don't even know what the crap that they're talking about, guys. Modern day Mongolia. Uh, you know, know that. how are you going to show up to a podcast? Ottoman Empire. No, uh-uh. You, you throw it at people like a baseball. You go on some crazy rant. We're all trying to follow your wild thoughts and the screaming and all this. And then you go, all right, y'all take it from here. And then you just walk away. Like, you don't, you don't know. Uh, yeah, it's your job, man. I mean, I could show up here and get if, halfway through yeah. setting this up and say, I'm out. Y'all set it up, son. What, well, you I was going to I was gonna talk about baseball and I got shut down. I like baseball. Yeah. Who's in the World Series this year? The Rangers and the Diamondbacks, man. Dang, that ain't happened in a long you time. You remember the 98 Braves, you, Chili? Who, who are the Rangers oh, yeah. and the Diamondbacks? Who, what, what city do the they go The New England in? Rangers <laughs> and the Arizona Diamondbacks. That, is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is it really? Oh, yeah. How'd you know that? Man, I used to play baseball. What? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I, I was... Um, He's good. So, no, oh, that yeah. wasn't right, was it? For real? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Arizona Diamondbacks. So, I used to, I mean, I played baseball all through middle school. <laughs> I mean. Uh, I was a catcher. Mm. Uh, really good, really good. Who'd you model your game after? <laughs> uh, mostly Chipper Jones. Back then, <laughs> back then, yeah. Uh, Chipper he, Jones was big. Yeah. Mark One of McGuire. the best catchers. Chipper you a switch Jones hitter? Was the best <laughs> you a switch hitter? No. Nah, oh. I always batted right hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he caught left-handed, though. That's what was weird about him. <laughs> when I wasn't catching, you know, though, I'd play a little right field, left field. Mm. Didn't play much center field. Utility man. Yeah. Uh, didn't really enjoy playing the infield. Uh, mm. It just wasn't really my style. Got you know? on you a little too quick. Yeah, you know, shortstop. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> balls coming at you, shortstop. Yeah. Run, coming at you. You know, it was just hard to get a touchdown like yeah, that. <laughs> it really wasn't for me. Yeah. But, you know, I still follow baseball. So I, I totally agree with this guy, the UFOs. He said sports are just a distraction. And I think it is something the government manufactured, kind of like Instagram and Facebook, just to keep us distracted. Well, like sports college, are for peasants. College ball day is when the government's doing like the most sketchy stuff ever. But nobody's paying attention because they're all watching football. What is college ball day? I don't know. Whatever day the, college is play, play the Super Bowl. No, not dude. the Super Bowl. I'm just saying the like playoffs. Isn't Y'all there... remember when that uh that scuba dive thing blew up underwater? At oh, yeah, Titanic? Yeah. Scuba dive. Yeah. That tank thing they took <laughs> underwater. Yeah, I remember that. Propane the scuba tank. Dive thing? Yeah. yeah. Wait, what does that you have to do with anything? That was a big distraction too. You know, a lot of other stuff went down on that day, yeah. supposedly. It was, yeah. Hmm. All the a, a lot of this crap going on in uh, with Israel and Palestine, which Ch Chile, uh, Chile has a lot of information on that. But a lot of that's just a distraction too. Um, but yeah, you're right. Sports are for 
all of you fat, lazy peasants <laughs> to keep to keep you guys, you know, some something to occupy your your thoughts and something to occupy your time. Thank That's all they're for. Chicken wings, jerseys, screaming, beer, and the couch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. That's chilly. <laughs> That's chilly. <laughs> for sure. All right. Well, thanks for uh, giving us an update on baseball. Yep. Yeah, thanks uh, for tuning in, guys. I want to I want to <laughs> share something with you guys. I want to pick up on a conversation that we had last week where we were talking about the uh, that if you want to be saved, um, basically that prayer, praying, accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. And Chili brought up a really good point. And I, he, 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 in a way, respectfully, because he's respectful to me, he, I am his elder, he respectfully challenged me on that as if I was promoting the the concept of cheap grace in other words i can just say this prayer and i'm good to go i can just say this prayer and i can roll along and keep living my life man and uh you know we got we we kind of hit that I, I i explained to chili that i wasn't advocating for cheap grace and that there 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 should there has to be things that change along with you accepting Christ by way of the sinner's prayer. Um, I'm reading this book right now. Does anybody know who this guy is? I can't read it. What's his name? I do, but you Dietrich, oh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer? Yeah. You told me. What do you know about him, Chill? Because I, I really, for real, because I've never know, met him. I, but I just, about his history. What am I incorrect in saying that this gentleman right here, he was German and he was actually caught in a plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler? Is that uh, correct? I don't even know about that. I mean, I don't, yeah, like I know all this stuff about him. I never met him. You idiot. <laughs> uh, as far as I know, he was caught in a plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler. And after shortly after being caught, he was sentenced to death by hanging. And they hung him. Well, this book right here is simply called Discipleship. Okay? And one of Bonhoeffer's main topics that he discusses both in this book and also in his other book, which is titled The Cost of Discipleship, is the concept of costly grace. All right? I read something in this book that really impacted me just earlier today. And I'm going to read it to you guys. When when someone says at the end of their life of seeking knowledge, quotations, I see that we can know nothing. So he's describing someone who's at the end of their life and they've spent their whole life seeking knowledge and they come to the conclusion at the very end, I see that we can know nothing. Mm, I've gotten close to that. You got a long ways to go. No, I've gotten close to coming to that conclusion. Okay. But it has to come at the end of your Talk life. Talk about it a lot. Well, maybe this is the end of my life. So, when someone says that at the end of their life, then it is a conclusion. You understand? Something can only be a conclusion if it comes toward the end. Because you have to try first. Right? So, it's a conclusion. As a result, it's a conclusion. It is something entirely different than when a student repeats this same statement during the first semester of school to justify his laziness. You guys understand that? Yeah, well, I mean, I say on this podcast all the time that I I approach the, the notion that you really can't know anything. Yet, I 
I do think it would be quite the mistake to assert for certain that you can't know anything because in my estimation, that is a contradictory statement because saying, asserting that you cannot know anything suggests that you do know that you cannot know anything. So that would be thus knowing something. So I, I avoid saying that you cannot know anything, but but it does seem that way. I will say, but I haven't come to that conclusion. So, so to, to, and what, and what he's saying is he's, he would be describing me in the first semester of my life that I, yeah, basically it's, it's that exactly that I feel this way or think that way, but I haven't come to that conclusion to the end. Yep. Because it can only be a conclusion if you've exhausted your time and efforts. Yeah, and but that is what it leads. But I don't to. believe you can ever exhaust the efforts either. I don't believe you can make that conclusion at the end of your life for certain. Mm. But I also don't think it's a waste to seek knowledge, even with the idea or the notion that you cannot actually know anything. Mm-hmm. Mm. I've wondered about that, like certain things in the Bible that, like, you were not going to get any further, but you can research and read other people's like theology on things like is that a waste of time i don't i think even in the face of an impossible task of gaining knowledge i think it's the only worthwhile endeavor to undertake on the earth is to gain knowledge that you won't ever get yeah i I figured you were going to like this chili because it, it 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 ties into one of your um one of your principles that you're most adamant about, which, by the way, was deeply impactful to Lenny Jr. on this past ROP course. He shared it with us in the uh, in the After Actions report mm. that the most impactful quote, literally, that he had ever heard was when you told him uh, he must live life and accept the reality that in a way of accepting the reality that there is no finish line. Mm. Yeah. Like you have to keep trying. You have to keep searching. You have to keep going. Even when you come to the realization that there's no, there's not going to be a finish line, which means you're going to have to keep trying the entire time. Mm -hmm. Who are you doing that for though? Is it for your own good or is like in a spiritual way, is it just you're doing that for God? So in this book right here, Costly Grace, he's talking about it in a, in a, in a spiritual sense. So it's something that God wants us to do. It's not like to better our character. I guess both come with, huh? I think it's how we were created. So it's not, you don't have to separate it from the uh, tangible physical realm and then also the spiritual realm. Because I think, it, to me, it only becomes consistent if you accept that we were created with this ingrained in us by God. And I, I think that God created us with, we are wired that way uh, against our will. Essentially, we can't, we can't change the fact that we're wired that way. And it actually works out practically in that it makes your life uh, better whenever you come to that realization. And what I mean by we're wired that way is I don't really understand that. I don't know why we're wired the way we are or, or how, obviously, I, don't, I definitely don't understand how God created us. But I think that I think it, the alternative, it it works out to where the alternative is you, you give up and you die. Metaphorically and, and And physically, and physically, the only way to keep living is to keep pursuing something, right? Keep seeking, keep seeking God and keep pursuing a finish line that doesn't exist. And, most people can't wrap their head around that because they think it's foolish. They think it's, it's, it's hopeless. They say, well, you literally hopelessness is built into the statement, a finish line that doesn't exist. But what you fail to realize is the ultimate hopelessness is to not pursue it at all, because that's your alternative. You have two choices. The rea- it's just reality that there, the finish line doesn't exist that we're all looking for. So then you have two options. You can either pursue it regardless of that fact 
and make the essentially just make the best out of it, or you cannot pursue it at all, and you die. Yeah, you're spiritually dead, and you physically die. Yeah. You're gonna physically die anyway, but you but the physical death happens much quicker and mm-hmm. less abundantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you, any any purpose or any any action or anything that's driving you just disappears. And that's interesting because I, that probably not, not that not saying that to Lenny, but the, the time I spent with him on that rock course, um, in between that second point and third point was, uh, you know, that was probably the most impactful part of that to me as well. So mm. I enjoyed getting to do that. And, uh, He's a special kid too. Yeah, so. Lenny Jr. Yeah, he he um he got a lot out of that man. It was a uh, it was eye opening for me during this rite of passage course that we did with uh, Trades Talk and Stephen and mm-hmm. his guys because we had two, no, we had three young men that were still in their teens. And it was really interesting to me of how much those young men got out of that course. When I heard, I hope so. When I heard Lenny Jr. share uh, and Sebastian, um, and even Steve Jr., like they were deeply impacted in a positive way by that course. And you could just see it by the look on their face during the after actions report. Mm. Like they were like, Holy crap. The things that were said out there, the things that we got to experience, the things that we went through, I think they would agree. It has changed them. And I don't know, man, it, it, for me, I, I definitely think the rock course is, is equal. It is definitely impactful for adults, and for some adults, it is equally impactful, but I think those young men were impacted more by that mission than anybody else there, Mm. and um, I don't know. It's actually made me consider potentially doing something once a year that's specifically for that age group, even though I can't stand youth. I think... (laughs) If they're going to get that much out of it, and it and it, it's 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 going to change the trajectory of their life and the fact that they have a lot more life left than somebody in their forties and fifties, uh, it's worthwhile. And if you can't stand them, why don't you try to make an impact? Well, on it's that? it's good for me. I mean, if I he can stand them, he just, just like gonna saying make me that. More, it's just going to give me permission to be more mean to him. That's just a trope he likes to exhaust. He he can he he likes youth. Y'all need to the partner youths. with James and Beyond <laughs> and do something next year. Well, we'll see what happens with it, but but uh, I agree with you. That should be done. Yeah, I I, I think that's a potential. Uh, so Mr. Bonhoeffer continues on in the book here. Um, he says, used as a conclusion, in other words, this statement, I see that we can know nothing, used as a conclusion, the sentence is true. As a presupposition, it is self-deception. So what he's saying is the student who in the first semester tries to use this statement, I see that we can know nothing, to justify his laziness, he's deceiving himself, whereas the man who has spent his entire life seeking knowledge comes to the ultimate conclusion at the end of his life, I see that we can know nothing. It is in that manner a conclusion and is true. That means that knowledge cannot be separated from the existence in which it was acquired. Only those who in following Christ leave everything they have can stand and say that they are justified solely by grace. They recognize the call to discipleship itself as grace and grace as that call. But those who want to use this grace as as to excuse themselves from discipleship 
are deceiving themselves. Yeah. So Bonhoeffer here is talking about this concept or this, this is being talked about in context of discipleship. And it ties into our conversation last week because what we talked about at the moment of salvation, we can choose to... I can't be perfect, so I'm not even going to try. Exactly. We can say, you know what? We've accepted Christ. We're forgiven by his grace. So why, done. why, yes, done. Why then do I need to take being a disciple of Christ seriously? Why then does it need to cost me anything? I can't be good anyways. So that is cheap grace. You know, go ahead, Chill. No, I'm, it's it's what people do. Uh, it's what you. There's a ten. There's a he, tendency in human nature to do it with everything. When people are way overweight and they're staring down at a mountain of work to do, to rectify their situation and make improve their health, they go, "I'm never gonna look. I'm never gonna be as fit as." I, n name the person, Courtney DeWalter <laughs> or, or Harvey Lewis or, or what, whatever the name is you want to say. I don't know. I can't even think of a fit person right now, but there's plenty of them. <laughs> uh, and they go, well, I'm never going to be that. I'm never going to be, ex you know, the best health that I was or yeah, but, but they, so they completely throw out the fact that they could be better than they are now. They completely throw out the fact that they could improve their health greatly and potentially prolong their productive years on the earth and, and, and throw out the fact that they could be a better mother or father or, or husband and wife or whoever they are. They completely throw that out because they'll never be perfect. They'll never, they'll never get to that finish line. They don't freaking exist anyway. You do it with everything. That was... My thought was just like I was thinking if there's anything in our basic human experience where there is an actual finish line. Is yeah, there anything really. where Death. we're like, exactly. I don't think there's anything like. But you don't know when that is anyway, so right. forget about it. Right. It, don't even, it shouldn't even exist to you. You don't know when it is. You don't. It's, it's, it's inconsequential. Just live. Well, this, this book is really challenging me to think in my own personal um uh, you know, my own personal uh, life, I guess, and, and, you know, even the ministry aspect of what we do here at 307 Project. And, and in this particular chapter in discipleship, Bonhoeffer is basically saying this concept of cheap grace, meaning we can accept Christ, we're covered by grace, we know we can't be good, so we don't need to try. We just need to go on about our life. We don't need to take discipleship and following Christ seriously and give it our best effort. Uh, he's saying that this is the main, the main thing. This message of cheap, cheap grace is the main thing that has eroded the body of Christ or the church here on earth. In other words, he, he makes a statement in here somewhere. I remember reading it. He says that the, basically the whole world has become Christianized because, because we can all just, we, we've well, all it's just, all inclusive. We've all just accepted, we've all just been preaching this idea of cheap grace without sacrifice, without discipleship, and that it's just available to all. And, and so then what we end up having is, is a, is a massive amount of lukewarm people. Lukewarm people. And it's made me think about, you know, people, people who will approach me and want to accept Christ, want to be baptized, which, by the way, we've baptized numerous people. Blake just baptized a, a gentleman on... Uh, Sunday. Sunday. Um, but I feel the need to have a discussion with these people about the cost of discipleship. And to you, you have to take that aspect of salvation seriously. 
Because the grace that God gives us wasn't cheap. The cost was the life of his son. The grace that we've received is not cheap. So why do we cheapen it by saying, we're good, man, we're saved, we're Christians, let's just stick our freaking head in a hole and live like the world because we can't be good anyways, and we're going to be good to go. I mean, I, I can't, nobody can judge anybody's salvation but I've got to think that we've we've got it all wrong. When you think that, when you think that you you need to do these things, right? Like, so I need to live this way because I was saved. It shouldn't be that way. It should be I'm saved now. I can't help but live this way. It's a result. It's not an effort. If you're, I mean, again, I can't say it, but for me personally, I from what I read in the Bible. I feel like if if you're having to strive to do these things and it's not a desire in your heart, do you know Jesus at all? I mean, I don't know. I'm just posing the question. Yeah, yeah. At Romans 6, Paul writes, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He's saying, should we just keep sinning because there's so much grace out there? Who cares? That's, that's, just, what, that's what Bonhoeffer's alluding to. Yeah. yeah. And he says in, in verse 2, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? So he's saying, no, you could, you don't keep sinning because grace abounds. If you died in sin to Jesus and now you're following him, how can you live in that anymore? If you put the old self to death, how can you now live in sin? It, it just doesn't work. It's like we we teach this, this grace or this uh, this... Faith by works with unknowingly, we teach it in America. And that's what's that's what's out there. We talk about what you need to do, and this is how a Christian should live. And you know what all those things are? They're a, a litmus test for your heart and, and how well you know Jesus and how much you love him. Because all those things should happen. Yeah, you might still struggle and fall, but it shouldn't be like a just a grind every day. Like, oh, gosh, this is so hard and no, it should be what you want to do. Your desires should become in alignment with him. And that's what I think about it. I mean, I, I don't think it should be a struggle. If, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. I, I, if ahead, it buddy. shouldn't be a struggle, though, why does everybody talk about how much suffering and sacrifice will come with it? Well, because isn't it hard even like is I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, Blake? people call it suffering and sacrifice, but you read where Peter and the disciples were persecuted in the Bible, and when they leave, they say, <laughs> we count it joy that we got to be persecuted for this. Now, maybe not when they were being tortured and killed. Maybe th that part of their flesh, they didn't say that. But if you look at their life, every time they were persecuted, they counted it joy because that ensured them that they were on the path of serving the Lord and that he was still using them because that's what he tells us will happen to us. So maybe it is um, is suffering. It's considered suffering to the flesh, but to the spirit, it should be uplifting. Yeah. Well, walking this out though, you know, tangibly, you know, what, what is, so, so the, th the thing is, is although that change happens in your heart, like you were saying, Blake, when you receive the Holy spirit and your, your wants, you want to follow Christ, right? You want to be a disciple. You can still stand in the way of that. And and so I, I think this is, I'll give you an example. The other day, I literally thought, after, after I had this interaction with this um, guy in town that I told you guys about on the podcast the other day, uh, I thought, you know what, man, I need to go, I'm going to go into town and I'm just going to sit there in that area and I'm going to bring, bring some, uh, some food with me and I'm going to bring my Bible with me and I'm just going to hang out and hopefully I'll get to see this guy again. Now that is what a disciple of Christ should want to do. But what did I say? I said, nah, not today. I got other things to do today. Uh, not tomorrow either. I got other things to do tomorrow. 
ah, that's going to be uncomfortable. I don't want to sit. I don't want to be seen out there doing that. Right. Um, nah, and I've still yet to go do it. So although the thoughts and the desires of your heart do change, many times I stand in the way, I stand in the way yeah. of actually doing those things well, that, that's because of my own convenience. That's what I'm saying is it's a, it's a test to you. You know what you should do and you didn't do it because of yourself. So that's a, that sh that's a test of you that to say, I haven't, I haven't put this part of myself to death. I haven't surrendered this part of my life to you, God. And that's what that's showing you. It's not, had you said, all right, you know, I'm going to put, I'm whatever I feel, I'm going to do it anyways. Cause that's what I want to do. The act doesn't do anything for you. It, it doesn't matter whether you do it or don't. It's revealing your heart to yourself. Yeah. So it, we're all going to have those things where we don't want to do like our flesh, you know, our uh, whatever you want to call it. Our flesh takes over and, and we yield to that rather than to the Holy Spirit. But then all that shows us is that, well, you haven't put that area to death yet. So you need to work on that. Yep. It, I'm not saying that as soon as you you follow God, boom, everything, every desire you have aligns and it's easy going and you're just going to do everything he wants you to do. And when he calls you to be uncomfortable, it's not going to be uncomfortable because now you're in alignment with the Lord. There will be things that way, but there'll also be things like you just said. And then that should show you, OK, well, I haven't totally put myself to death yet because I just did what I wanted to do instead of what I know I should do. Well, and aren't we all going to be doing what you just, the scenario you just laid out, aren't we all going to be doing that until the day we die? Like, yeah, so to and, a degree. Yeah. And I'm, and, and, and I'm covered by grace anyway. So why do I even try anymore? Well, no, no. See that, that was going to be where yeah, I went yeah, with it's, that. It's, it's like, it's, yeah. it's just a constant struggle, but that's okay. That's okay. And I like what you said from them walking away from the struggle of like, I don't know. It's like an opportunity. Yeah, like, exactly. Okay, this is this is something I need to work on. Well, I was going to ask you when you were talking about like when I go to baptize somebody, I this is what I heard. I'm probably paraphrasing. I would like to know that they understand the cost of discipleship and they're ready. And even the concept of discipleship. Yes. Yeah. And so in my mind, I was like, how do you do that? How do you like like Blake said like that was popped in my head too like a litmus test for that blankets over every person you could come across. Like, how do you prepare? Because we all have different faults. We all have different gifts and God's using us all in different ways. So like how, how can you communicate that cost and make sure someone's ready? Like, how do you do that? Well, I, I think um, for me going to scripture is a, a good start. So, you know, he 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 kind of alludes to, to that in chapter 2 here. Let's read this to you guys. This is Mark chapter 2, verse 14. As Jesus was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. He got up and followed him. Now, this is Bonhoeffer speaking. The call goes out, and without any further ado, the obedient deed of the one called follows. The disciple's answer is not a spoken confession of faith in Jesus. Instead, he it is in the obedient deed. How is the direct how is this direct relation between call and obedience possible? It is quite offensive to natural reason. Reason is impelled to reject the abruptness of the response. It seeks something to mediate it. It seeks an explanation. In other words, he's saying right here, we can go back to Scripture as we explain, if we want to explain what discipleship looks like, it is a, it is a literal following Christ. It is, it is abrupt. It's it's not something is there's not some middle ground. There's not it's hey, all right, man. Christ has called you to follow him. Follow him. 
right? Um, and I'm looking forward to getting more into that. Now, I'm not saying that I agree with everything that Bonhoeffer writes here. Uh, there's None of us are exactly right. But this is definitely a challenging thing to read here, uh, especially for us as uh, Americans. Yeah. So my, my thoughts, too, are drifting to, like, the cheap grace and but also like on the counter just like the verse from paul that everybody quotes about i do the things i don't want to do and you know it's like how do you counter that with the fact that we fall and sin and our flesh is what we're fighting against our whole lives and that humbles us enough to make us realize that we need jesus like, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's a part of the striving for perfection. It's like we're taking control. Well, yeah, you can get you can get way off on this. Yeah. yeah. And there's something there that's like there's a balance of like. Just, OK, I, I am going to I don't know. There's there's something there is like a realization that like you have some control, but you're really not in control. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think I can articulate it well enough to keep going. Oh Don't yeah, we, we've had that discussion many times on the podcast. Oh yeah, it always turns into a free will discussion. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it just inevitably does. But we can't. We are unable to reconcile the fact that acceptance of Christ does not result in immediate perfection we can't reconcile that it, yeah. it's it in many ways it seems that that should be the way that it works mm -hmm. but it doesn't work it, it doesn't you can see that it doesn't but then why does it not i mean that's what we're that's what this whole th discussion is reconciling mm -hmm. can i ask, see if i can word this right do you guys think that if somebody has been saved and they are they are walking well with Christ and like their life mirrors that if their life starts going downhill because they make a couple bad decisions, would you guys look at that and consider a reflection of how good their relationship is with Christ? Like if they made poor decisions and it's impacting their life negatively, would you say you're probably not right with God? Or is there a chance that God gave those things to them for a purpose and it's not a reflection of the things they're doing or not doing in their what relationship. What did they do? I mean, what made their life go downhill? Oh, I'm trying to think of an example. Like something Yeah, somebody cheats on their wife, then I would say, well, I don't know how you can walk hand in hand with Christ and cheat on your wife. Yeah. I I still can't judge their relationship, but I can say for me, if I'm really close to Christ, I don't know how I could I don't know how I could do that. Yeah, but you know, like if they're like Job, they lose everything they've got, and you know, not by way of Job's decisions, though. right? Right. But if things like that happen to them, um, I feel like there's a thread of uh, like, am I saved or am I not saved in this? Like, yeah, of course, you know, people. And so I was studying earlier this week. It's in First John two, and it says. Chile talks about we can't really know anything, and this is something the Bible tells us that we can know. It says, now by this, we know that we know him, talking about Jesus. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, Jesus' word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. And that's a pretty... But once again, none of us do all the time. No, uh-uh. So that, that's then where you go, well, there's that... That's a tough... That's a there's tough... that confusion. First, yeah. There's that, well, yeah, yeah. That, that does say you can know this, yet there's still human observation that goes, well, yeah, that dude does most of the time. Yeah. But what about that? That's a tough verse. Yeah, I mean, there's still that doubt in our in our minds. Yeah, to to me uh, on that specific case, there, Chile, that because we can't describing. reconcile why we're not perfect. Yeah, 
I, I think to me, the, 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 what it boils down to in that scenario is, um, is, is when we do screw it up, right? When we, when we don't walk as Christ walks, which is going to happen. And, and again, nobody can see into your heart and your mind. But the thing that gives me hope is when I do walk contrary to Christ, when I recognize it, it truly grieves me, and I want it to be fixed. Like, I, des I desire for it for I, I I I want to turn away from it. What if and that's the suffering we're talking about? Well, mm. and to provide a little context on that, I'll read the verse before it. It, this, it says, "My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not only for ours. On, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. And then it goes into that. It's titled The Test of Knowing Him. By this we know him if we keep his commandments. So he starts it out with saying, I'm writing you this so that you won't sin. But if you do, we have an advocate in the Father, and he has covered our sins. And I think it's getting to what Chad's talking about. You know, if we know him, we're going to keep his commandments. We're going to do the things that he says. But if we say we know him, and we walk around and our desire is not to keep him and we don't do anything remotely close to what he's telling us to do, then then we're a liar because we're saying one thing and we're doing the other. And so by not keeping the commandment in the act, okay, you know, I don't know, you might say occasionally or or there's no daily. Yeah, I mean there's no, you know, time reference there or anything, but uh, but it's the desire of your heart to do it. And if your heart desires to do it, then you're going to do it a lot more than you're not. If you're, if that is your heart's desire, that's my belief. So yeah, I just, by adding that at the beginning, I think that clears up some of what we're. Well, yeah. And in light of the, in light of the verse that you read in, in first John there, I mean, um, when, when it, when I ask myself, what am I most frequently grieved by? It's myself. That, that's why this whole, you know, this, this whole thing about being free from yourself, why, why it is, is well, and again, there is another, every, another thing that can never be completely achieved in this life. Um, but I'm, I am most frequently grieved by me, my decisions my selfishness, my, you know, desire to do and want things that are apart from Christ, it grieves me. And so for me, ultimately, to, to cut, the more, the more I can cut down on myself, the less I am grieved. Yeah. Because I'm the thing that grieves me the most frequently. Yeah, the more you can, more of yourself you can put to death, the more you can turn over to Christ. Yeah, and ultimately, the more joyful I become. Yeah. So, but not for sake of your joy, for sake of your love for Christ. It's not exactly. about the joy. I mean, yeah, that's a, again, that's a, a byproduct, you can say, but you don't do it for the sake of it, or you shouldn't. <sighs> Well, we have the hard conversations here on 3 of 7 Podcast, man. Generally, we don't reach many conclusions, but we have the hard conversations. Uh, YouTube, do y'all got any questions before we log off of here? Were you going to say something, Chili? No. Okay. YouTube, if you got any questions, send them in. Hopefully, next week, we're going to be in a brand new studio for you guys. I'll be slaving away tomorrow and Friday and Saturday, uh, getting that thing ready. And hopefully by next Wednesday, we'll be back in it or we'll be in it for the first time. 
I have a feel I, I'm I'm going to be interested to see how Chili likes it. We're going to try to make it as comfortable as we possibly can for him. Um, <laughs> you know, Chili doesn't do well with change. Okay, so we're going to try to make it comfortable on him. But uh, I'm really excited about it. Um, just some real simple ones. Just hit these quick. How long have y'all each been on your walk? Uh, I would say mine started in sixth grade. Brooke? Uh, mine was probably 2017. Okay. Yeah. About six years. Let's see. Yeah, that's about right. Well, 2015 was probably the start of it. All right. Yeah. Chili? I, I think I've said this before. I don't really know. It's been my entire life. I've never known anything different. So since he come out the womb, he'd been on it for, <laughs> he'd been going since then. Chad? Obviously that's not, but. 11 years. 11 years. 11 years. Guy yeah. said, talk about the shirt. You ain't going to do that yet. No, I'll, um, I'll explain this shirt to y'all when Chili gets them back in stock. What was Chili's struggle? Keeping them shirts in stock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mine comp. <laughs> Can y'all do a basic shooting course? Not for the public. You got to train with us. We had some skid yeah. marks come out one time and ruined no. it for everybody. So. We ain't training no. We ain't training the general public. Um, no, nah. not to use guns. No. Uh, super chats. Yeah, we got a few super chats. I took pictures of here. Let me reference back to them. So we got one here from Andrew Cargyle. 10 bucks. Andrew, thank you, good sir. We got Larry Medina, not to be confused with Funky Cold Medina. $1.99. <laughs> Chad, you. remind folks not to tuck their ears in. See thank you, Larry. Did. Yeah, thank you for that. Yep, yep. Ira Beam gave $37, said, have you noticed who mostly goes off the deep end? Quotation. Hint, who was it that killed Chris Kyle? So, appreciate that, Ira. Thank you, Ira. Danny J gave $10, said, death is inconsequential. Just live. Quote from Chili. He said, I needed to hear that. Cheers, lady and gents. Who was that? That was Danny J. Thank Danny, you. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Artie Rowe gave 10 bucks. said, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Artie, thank you, brother. Yep. Amen to that. That's what I got. Yeah. Well, I, Ira, Ira was referencing veterans going off the deep end mm. oh, uh, okay that's what i ira was was referencing um that's let me tell you let me tell you guys man look whatever you think about veterans whatever you think about people because because the perspective on people who served in the military has changed quite a bit over the last few years uh, i don't think that we're in a place now where you guys hate veterans like it sounds like it was back during vietnam and stuff um i don't think we're in a place but i i think that people are viewing people in the military now as the strong arm of our government to carry out its agenda globally and i i, I do want to say there is some truth to that but I want to tell you, I, I also believe at the same time, uh, 90 plus percent of guys and girls who served in the military were doing it because they wanted to serve their country. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, man, Unless you've lived that life, you don't know nothing about the crap what you're talking about, man. You have no idea what the crap you're talking about unless you've lived that life. You can't even freaking imagine how stressful that life is and the amount of sacrifice that life requires. Um, so the best thing you can do, unless you have served in the, in the United States military, the best thing you can do is keep your freaking mouth shut 
about crap you don't know nothing about. So I'll leave y'all with that. I got, we had a couple other super chats come in. Travis Van S gave 20 bucks again. Thank you, Travis. Isaiah 6 8, and Artie Rowe gave two more dollars. Reference 2 Timothy 2 15. And uh, this question may be worth Thank you, Artie. answering if y'all want to yeah, answer. Yeah. Big Ben, he said, Do you ever feel like you put working out over God? Oh, yeah. Did that my whole life. Trying not to now. Um, do I feel like I put, I, I no, I, for, for me personally, um, maybe, at, maybe at some point in my life, but I mean, I, I make, so I make, I make it a point. I mean, biscuit, I think you can vouch that I'm not a hypocrite. I make it a point every single day to start my day by reading the word of God and uh focusing on 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 that. And uh most of the time, although sometimes I don't, most of the time that includes reading God's word and prayer. Uh is that right, Boo Boo? Yeah. That's accurate. So uh, that that is my priority every at the beginning of every single day. Um, I, I think that truly my I think truly my perspective on fitness, although I enjoy I do enjoy working out, I think truly my perspective on fitness is at least most of the time is a is that it is a conduit. Um, one to glorify God and two also to make sure that I am physically healthy so that I am prepared physically to do the work that I am being daily called to do. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Uh, now does that get, uh, ha, ha, is that to say I've never put exercise or, or physical fitness before God? No, man. I'm not saying never. But I don't... That That's that's not something that... You've never been convicted of. Yeah. Your exercise. That's yeah. The same Maybe it's maybe. happened before, but but yeah. No, that's a great question, though. And Chili says, obviously, that's something that he struggled with. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I still do. I mean, I, uh, I approach it and always have differently than you. It's never been to prepare myself for anything. It was for the sake of it, and it was for just trying to be good at it and you know the best at it and, and everything and i i worshiped it and uh trying not to do that now although i don't even know that i would say i put fitness ahead of god i put myself yeah. i was very selfish i mean it was yeah could have been anything right it was just about me 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 so it's really putting myself ahead of it yeah and fitness was just the conduit yeah you used to... that's kind of not important really it was myself so yeah that's the same thing with i mean you could it could be fitness. It could be whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, knowledge. It could be. You know, old Chili, he's really coming along, man. You know, imagine <laughs> imagine what he's going to be when he's my age. Well, I mean, I don't know if the world will be around the time he gets up up in the years like you, and you're kind of long in the tooth. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll be in my 50s when you're in your 70s. I know. That's insane, dude. Yeah. Well, guys, clock's ticking. We appreciate you tuning in. Lord willing, we'll see y'all next week from the new studio if uh, if the tech guy decides to do his job. So, love you guys. Don't Upset. count on it. Oh my goodness. Don't count on it. <laughs>